you're listening to Love and Libido with me, your host, Dr. Emily Jamia. The goal of this podcast is to educate and inspire. My hope is that you will learn tools to create connection and cultivate passion, both within yourself and in your relationships. Here's what's coming up on today's episode. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for tuning in to Love and Libido with me, your host, Dr. Emily Jamia. Today is our first Q&A episode, and I am so excited for this because I really believe that nothing makes us feel more connected to other people than hearing stories from people just like us. We all have questions about our relationships and our sex lives, and there's still a lot of taboo and shame that surrounds some of these concerns. And so I love that I have this uh, platform and can give people an opportunity to share their stories and to share their questions because I want to take some of that taboo and stigma away and shine a light on what are some very, very common issues so that you guys don't feel like you're so alone. So without further ado, let's get into our first question. So our first submission comes from Tim in Cincinnati. He writes, I am in love with my sister-in-law. I have been in love with her always. My confession is that I would love to have sex with her. I know she feels the same. However, she wouldn't dare do anything at all. What should I do? Ooh, this is a tough one. So my first question for you is what, if any, deficits do you think exist in your relationship with your wife that is making you turn your attention to her sister? I think that a lot of times we start looking elsewhere, sometimes just out of pure curiosity, but other times it's because maybe there's something missing in our primary relationship. And so I think it would be really important for you to spend some time thinking about what's going on in your primary relationship that maybe has you looking outside to find answers and, um, you know, especially before you were to act on anything. The other thing I want you to think about is you say that you're in love with her and you really want to think about what that means. There, there are sometimes we have the feeling of love and that's based more on curiosity or infatuation versus intimacy and commitment. So we can have a really, really strong attraction to someone and a curiosity about that individual But I really don't think that until you have spent significant time with a person and you're open about your feelings with them and there is some level of commitment or experience that you've shared together, and really I think the key here is that there's openness about your feelings, you can't really say that you are in love with that person. I think what you're describing is more of an intense curiosity or even infatuation with your sister-in-law. And so I want I want to caution you on using the word love here. You may see qualities in her that are different from what you have um, than what your wife has. And you want to just think about what's attracting you to some of those qualities. And that can, I think, shed some light on maybe some things you need to pay attention to in your primary relationship. The last thing I want to say is you want to be really, really careful here. My advice to you would be to establish very clear boundaries. Um, I would avoid spending any time alone with your sister-in-law. Um, you have to be aware of what could happen if your feelings were to come out um, and certainly what might happen if you were to act on them at all. This could be really devastating not just for your marriage, but for the family as a whole. Um, I think that your wife would probably feel really betrayed to know that you've been harboring these feelings toward her sister. And so it may be best for a period of time until you feel like you have more control over your feelings or you know, hopefully until they can subside and you work on your marriage a little bit that you really try to minimize your interaction with her. If there's a large family gathering, focus on talking to other people in the family and try to keep your distance from your sister-in-law. I hope that helps. Okay, let's go to our second submission. My wife and I have been married for 28 years. We are in a good place emotionally, mentally, and sexually. We've gone from having sex about twice a month to having sex one to two times each day. This has been going on for the last year and a half. 
We've been talking and exploring the possibility of the lifestyle slash non-monogamous swinging with other couples, community, and threesomes. Has there been any research on this and how it affects couples? What are your thoughts and what would you advise in going down this journey? Thank you. C and L. They don't say where they're from. So my first thought is that you identify a lot of strengths in your primary relationship. You say that you're in a great place emotionally, mentally, and sexually, and that is awesome. I think it's ideal to be in a pretty healthy place in your primary relationship before you venture out into exploring um, sex or relationships with other people. A lot of people venture into non-monogamy because of a big relationship deficit and while to an extent that can be okay and we'll talk about that in a minute you want to at least feel like you're in a really good place emotionally with your primary partner because as we start to expand and share our emotional resources for some couples who aren't in a good place that can put a real strain on the relationship and Um, can trigger feelings of insecurity or jealousy. And so I think it's awesome that you guys are in a pretty good place already. And now a quick break for a word from our sponsors. Is emotional and physical intimacy a challenge in your relationship? Do you long for the feeling you had in the honeymoon phase? You're not alone. I've created a tried and true method for reinvigorating your relationship. My private online workshop takes an innovative yet scientifically based approach to teaching you the tools to cultivate passion and create connection that lasts. Visit emilyjamia.com slash workshop for your free trial. I am so confident that you'll have a positive outcome that I've created a 100% money back guarantee. You really have nothing to lose. And if that's not reason enough, subscribers to my podcast get 50% off. Subscribe to the show and use code half off at checkout. Offer expires at the end of the week. Visit emilyjamia.com slash workshop today. And now back to the episode. Um, it sounds like your sex life is in a pretty good place and you're just looking to expand on it. I think that that's also really great. Um, it sounds like you guys to an extent feel pretty mutually satisfied, but maybe you can acknowledge the fact that you both have really high sexual needs at this point and maybe you can't meet each other's needs a hundred percent. And so you're looking to see if maybe sharing some of those, needs or exploring those needs with other people would be a good option for you. So that's good. And it sounds like you've already talked about it a little bit because you say you've been exploring the possibility. Um, And so that tells me your communication is really strong and really that you're, you have good intimacy in your relationship. Broaching the subject of non-monogamy can feel really scary for a lot of people. And so the fact that you've already put your feelings out there to an extent, um, I think is awesome. And so I think that's another really good strength. So really, I think in a lot of ways, you guys are the ideal couple for this. You ask if there's been any research on this, and to answer your question, yes, there has. Um, I actually interviewed the author of one study, so you could go back and listen to episode 11, where I interviewed Martha Coppy. Um, She did a really comprehensive research study on polyamory and its effect on couples, and she said some things, well, really she said a lot of things that I liked. And one is that when you open the conversation about non-monogamy, you want to tell your partner that this is what she describes as a collaborative exploration, not a decision-making conversation. You want to give your partner plenty of time to assess and process their own thoughts and feelings. And she cautions people on going into, quote, persuasion mode, which can make your partner immediately shut down. And it sounds like you are, are doing this collaborative exploration with your partner already. If you liked this video, drop me a like and subscribe below. Share with a friend who might find it interesting. You can also listen to this in podcast form anywhere podcasts are streamed by searching for Love and Libido with Dr. Emily Jamia. Finally, follow me across all social media channels at Dr. Emily Jamia for daily emotional and physical intimacy tips.